Um, I chose a, a topic of a systematic approach to the to venous system because a lot of problems we encounter these days with the screening for uh, heart abnormalities at the 20-week scan, we may come to see uh, structures that you're not so used to. So I'm going to try and cover um, what is covered by the ESOR guidelines in terms of um, venous structures, venous return to the heart, and then we're going to add other things, some of which you are familiar with, like the umbilical system, uh, being obstetricians, most of you. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the coronary sinus and show some image of that, the azygous vein and the nominate vein. So this is expanding, uh, to some extent, the image that you obtain on the routine screening if you are used to following the ISO guidelines. And I think you're very familiar with this diagram, which comes from the 2013 guidelines. And based on this, if you read the paper uh, on my diagram here, there are only part of the venous system that you expect to see uh, on your routine 20-week scan. And that consists of the inferior vena cava, the superior vena cava, and the pulmonary veins. So if we start going sequentially through the screening views of the fetal heart, we start from the situs view, and in here we have one of the venous system drainage to the, the, the fetal heart, which is the position of the inferior vena cava uh, on the ositis view, which determines the position of the atria. But if we expand that and we look at the clip, that's the inferior vena cava to the right of the baby. And this is a very short clip here, which I'm playing back and forth just to show that that inferior vena cava is draining into the right atrium. So it's a one way not just to look at the situs, but to see that the inferior vena cava drains to the correct chamber, because very rarely can drain into the left atrium, for example. And he also receives here some of the hepatic veins. So this is all on axial views, which is what the screening guidelines are based on. If we move then from the situs to the next view, which is the four-chamber view, and at that level, in terms of venous drainage, we are meant to look at the pulmonary veins uh, joining the left-sided left atrium. And again, a blown-up picture here with a clip, and you can see the recognizing the chambers. We're not going to discuss that because you know very well. This is the left atrium, this is the right side of the baby, and you can see here very clearly the right pulmonary veins coming into the left atrium and just about seeing a shadow of the left pulmonary veins as the fetus moves a little bit. Of course, it's very important to use color to identify the pulmonary veins, and I always split the image because if you look just at this image in isolation, you may not see the atrial septum, so you may miss uh, pulmonary veins that might be draining to the right atrium, for example. You may also miss uh, drainage into the coronary sinus. So by splitting the image, you have a clear view that this is the left atrium, and you can see that the pulmonary veins are draining to the left side of the atrial septum, and that's draining. You see much more clear, you see use color. Also important to, low, to know that the pulmonary venous Doppler signal, the velocity is much lower than the intracardiac velocity, and that's why we have a lot of aliasing within the heart itself, but we're concentrating on these veins. Very important for me is to look at the simultaneous pulmonary artery and pulmonary venous Doppler signal, and I described this many years ago to look at the cardiac rhythm, and uh, if you are interested in the rhythm, on the Tuesday there is a master class about arrhythmias, uh, in which I use a lot this technique to classify and to study and understand the mechanism of fetal arrhythmias. This representing atrial systole on the venous signal of the pulmonary vein and a simultaneous pulmonary artery. The flow into the uh, pulmonary artery represents the mechanical ventricular systole. So it gives you a very good idea of the cardiac rhythm and a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship. So then we move, move to the other views that we can assess venous drainage, which are higher up in the mediastinum, and that's a combination of the three vessel and the three vessel trachea view, and you're familiar with that, in which you have uh, to the, from left to right, the pulmonary artery, the aorta, and the superior vena cava. So these are all uh, axial views. You can see here a little bit already of the azygos that we'll talk about later on. So it's not meant to look at the azygos on the screening guidelines, but obviously we're always trying to do more uh, for our babies in our screening program. So that's the kind of screening guideline. You only assess that 
on the uh, axial views, and some of you may just be starting to do cardiac screening, so you may just be sticking to those views. But obviously, we can see these structures from all sorts of projections, and uh, a typical view here of looking at the systemic venous drainage is a sagittal view, because you can do a sweep on a sagittal plane between your SVC, superior vena cava aorta and pulmonary arch on this sagittal plane. And as you can see here, that is the superior vena cava draining into the right atrium. You see the right atrial appendage here, and you have the inferior vena cava coming from below, across the diaphragm and joining the right atrium. It's called the bicaval vein. And you already you can see here some of the umbilical venous returns. So it's quite nice to see that joining and seeing the longitudinal view of the inferior vena cava. So if you come to our uh, diagram, so those are really very basic assessment of the venous return to the heart, uh, which we can expand by looking at multiple views. And then we have additional uh, drainage to the fetal heart, which is the umbilical vein. Uh, a lot of people forget that you know, some, the blood has to go somewhere once it goes through the fetal umbilicus, and that's crossing into the foramen ovale, into the left atrium. Uh, we also have the coronary sinus, and the coronary sinus is the venous return from the heart back into the heart. We know about coronary arteries, so they supply the heart, they give the oxygen, they give, they give the, the glucose, and that blood, once it's used, has to return to the heart. So it returns here through the coronary sinus, and it opens into the right atrium. So that's a normal structure, sometimes easier to see, sometimes not so easy, but you need to be familiar with how it looks like so you can identify abnormalities as well. So that's the coronary sinus, cardiac venous return to the heart. And then, excuse my diagram here, I'll try to make a very clear. The, we have the azgus vein. The azgus is a normal vein, which normally drains onto the right into the superior vena cava. And of course, we have the venous return from the top of the body, the arms and the head, and that comes from the, uh, from the head on the left side, from the head here on the right side, and it crosses over just above the aorta, and it joins the superior uh, vena cava, which is the nominate vein, also called left brachiocephalic vein. And these structures are very clearly seen on the routine screening. So let's start with the umbilical venous return. And you're very familiar, I presume being most, uh, mostly obstetricians, on a sagittal view, we have here the umbilical vein, and if you use a velocity that's appropriate for the venous systems, you are going to identify some aliasing. That's a kind of a blurring of the color because you are uh, passing the Nyquist limit of the velocities, and the umbilical vein drains kind of very close to the heart and is directed towards the left atrium. If we look at the venous uh, cross-sectional view through the abdomen, we have here the umbilical vein. Note the velocity is relatively low, similar to the pulmonary vein. So you can do a sweep from umbilical vein to the heart and look at the, all the veins at the same time and then increase your velocity for the cardiac views. So you can see that's just starting to have some alias in here. So umbilical vein comes in, it narrows down, and it comes into the inferior vena cava. And you can see hepatic veins coming here and joining. So the umbilical venous return, high velocity, joins the inferior vena cava, and that's directed towards the left atrium. So again, as I said, the velocity around 20, 25 centimeters in mid-gestation. And that's the Doppler signal across the ductus venosus. Again, you're very familiar, very interested in the A wave because that's important if you're monitoring your babies with fetal growth restriction. So um, more and more, if you incorporate the, the ductus venosus in your cardiac scan, we come across absence of the ductus venosus, which has no hemodynamic implication for the baby, provided it goes through the liver and is not uh, inserting itself in one uh, another extracardiac structure. So we have here the stomach, we have the umbilical vein coming in, and if you compare this with the previous one, we have the portal vein coming to the right and the portal vein going to the left. That's the inferior vena cava. And these are quite prominent, but we can't say yet that there is no ductus venosus. We need to see the venous return coming back into the inferior vena cava without a direct communication between the umbilical vein and the inferior vena cava just here. So this is the same fetus, uh, just moving upwards a little bit towards the fetal chest. That's the umbilical vein. Those are the portal veins. And normally you'd have the ductus venosus here joining the inferior vena cava. And what you can see here, there is no connection there, but instead, you're getting all this flow coming from the liver, from the right side, 
of the liver, from the left lobe of the liver, and joining the inferior vena cava directly. So all the blood goes into the liver, and then it comes back through the hepatic veins, and it joins the inferior vena cava, and there it goes into the heart without that direction to the left atrium, because we, we lose the angulation. So we see more and more of this. A lot of the time, this is a variant of normal. If you see nothing else wrong with the baby, but it can be and has been recognized to be associated with genetic syndromes, particularly Noonan syndrome. So if your nuclear translucency is increased and you have no ductus venosus of this type, you should consider uh, Noonan syndrome, particularly if the nuclear is persistent in the second trimester. And also, uh, perhaps there is some association with chromosome abnormality. So just look wide through the baby. So that can give you extra cardiac context, uh, starting from the venous return. This is another abnormality of the umbilical venous return, and you see here the angulation is completely different. This baby happened to have a high-risk NIPT for trisomy 21, but also has a ventricular septal defense. So this baby almost certainly has a trisomy 21, and we have here the umbilical vein coming in. It has a tortuous, uh, tortuous course here before it joins the inferior vena cava, and we did have a structure here like a ductus venosus, but it's a completely abnormal course. Um, if we go in a kind of slightly sagittal view, this is using the SMI flow uh, in the second trimester. You see that the inferior vena cava is dilated because the umbilical vein is joining almost at 90 degrees. That's the inferior vena cava coming here. That's the umbilical vein, and it joins in the wrong angulation and is uh, receiving virtually all the venous return here, dilated uh, inferior vena cava. Sometimes there is cardiomegaly. In this case, there wasn't because I think the ductus venosus was restricting the blood flow uh, velocities across the, the, the fetal heart. So we move from the umbilical circulation, then we come to the uh, coronary sinus, which, as I said, is a normal structure. Uh, and this is a structure that is at the back of the heart, so you're moving from your abdominal views into your four-chamber view, and before you get to your four-chamber view, you will see sometimes very prominent here, a ductus uh, coronary sinus opening to the right atrium. And then as you come more anterior, you can see a normal four chamber and you don't see that anymore. So sometimes, like anything, there is a variation size. Sometimes it's very easy to see, sometimes it's very prominent without having any, any reason for that. This is quite easy to see. There was no pulmonary vein draining there. There was no left superior vena cava. It's just uh, more prominent than usual coronary sinus, but it's easy to illustrate how it looks like. So all the blood return from the heart comes here through the coronary sinus and it comes into the right atrium. So a dilated coronary sinus, if you see that prominent, and then you see a circle here, as we saw in, in a subsequent clips, you have to think of a, an additional superior vena cava, which could be bilateral cava. It could be just a single left superior vena cava. And quite rare uh, to see, but it does exist, total anomalous pulmonary venous connection to the coronary sinus. So this can be quite tricky, and you've, you have to have seen something before to suspect that. So it's not usually detected antenatally, but it can be. Um, so I'm going to incorporate, instead, instead of showing you the views of the coronary sinus, incorporate already the azygo veins and the innominate vein, because a lot of that comes together, because abnormal drainage of the superior vena cava uh, and the azygo vein can uh, alter the appearance of the coronary sinus. So I'm going to, in terms of the clips, I'm going to mix the azygo vein here with the innominate vein and show the abnormalities. So we're back into our axial view, and as I showed quite at the beginning, we have here pulmonary artery aorta and the superior vena cava is slightly higher up than usual, and you see here very clearly that azgus vein coming from posterior to anterior and joining the superior vena cava at the level of the three-vessel view, very clearly here seeing the, the thymus as well. Again, on a sagittal view, uh, this is not the aortic arch, uh, this is coming from right to left, and this is the azygous vein, which in some babies is very prominent, in other babies is more difficult to see. But with new techniques, with uh, high-definition uh, color and power, we can quite often see the, the azygous vein draining here into the superior vena cava. This is the same feature as I showed you before. You have the, the superior vena cava, and that's the azygous joining here. So it's a normal, uh, a normal structure. And it's important to see that you do have the, uh, the inferior vena cava, because an interrupted inferior vena cava will have a bigger azygous, uh, and that's associated with uh, heterotaxis syndromes. So on color flow, again, a sagittal view showing the superior vena cava coming here, 
and you see here baby's breathing. So depending on the breathing, you get more change in intrathoracic pressure, so you get variation in the amount of flow coming directly from the inferior part of the body and joining the superior vena cava. Back again to our um, axial views, higher up, towards now the upper mediastinum, we have the innominate vein, which I showed in the diagram, which runs from left to right into the superior vena cava. And again, the level of the thymus here is, a, is an easy way of identifying that. And we are here at the trachea, we have the uh, bit of the aortic arch, and the venous flow that comes from left to right, because it's coming from the head, joining, crossing uh, to the right side, and then down into the superior vena cava. So let's look at some abnormalities that affect the coronary sinus, affect the, the superior vena cava, and, and, and the ascus vein. So here is uh, a four-chamber view, and you see a circle here on the back of the left atrium. Uh, if you see that kind of structure, it's better seen when you're playing. If you keep your eye there, as you move up into the mediastinum, you can see that there are two superior vena cava. So this is not a very prominent one, but it's clearly there. And quite often, but not always, you do not have the innominate vein. You have the two superior vena cava, cava coming independently. But uh, occasionally, you do see an innominate vein as well. So just play it again. So that's our coronary sinus, and you follow through, and it's here. So you're following that sequentially in an axial plane. So this is the same fetus in color, because I think it just highlights here the coronary sinus. And again, if I follow that there, and then you go into the upper mediastinum, and that's your, right, your left and your right superior cava vein. The, the right here is a little bit bigger than the left, sometimes the other way around. So this has no significance in terms of hemodynamic disturbance for the baby. And that's the sagittal view of the same. Someone has described this as a pipe sign many years ago, um, like Sherlock Holmes type thing. Uh, so that's your longitudinal view of this left superior vena cava coming here into a dilated coronary sinus into the right atrium. So the venous return is going into the correct place. And that's again, let's so just play that one. See, you're very close here to the aorta, uh, and you just see pulmonary arch, because you're coming from left to right. So you can do that sweep and see the, the other superior vena cava. We don't see it here. And that's the uh, SMI here, the second trimester. Again, the still image showing the um, left superior vena cava drain into the uh, right atrium. And sometimes you only have one superior vena cave, and this is very much in the back of the heart, and sometimes this is misdiagnosed. If you have a dilated coronary sinus as a potential atrioventricular septal defect, this fits had a single left superior vena cava, so no right superior vena cava. So this time from the back here, you can see very dilated coronary sinus in here, and as you come up, there is your single uh, left superior vena cava. You can see there is an innominate vein right at the end, and I'll just stop a little bit because the level of the three-vessel view is a very abnormal view. So this is the level of your three-vessel view. So you have your pulmonary, your aorta, and if that vena cava were here, you'd have a perfect three-vessel view. But that vena cava has gone into the other side. So it's a completely abnormal three-vessel view, but again of no functional consequence for the baby because all the venous return from the upper body goes into the coronary sinus. That's the uh, innominate vein right at the end of the clip. So these are things that you are going to start seeing more and more uh, with improved screening and by moving a bit beyond and putting color on top of your normal screening guidelines. And sometimes that Asgus vein is really very, very prominent, like in this case here. You can see they have different directions from the aorta and the field of cava. They're almost the same size as the aorta, one going down, one going upwards. Obviously, the one ascending one is going into the uh, fetal heart, and the abdominal aorta is going away from the fetal heart. So on your basic views here, you'd have, uh, in your situs view, you have the azigus, which is posterior to the aorta. It can be on the right or can be on the left. Uh, in this case, he's on the, I think this baby had a, a right-sided stomach. So this was a case of isomerism with an azigus. And then on your three-vessel view, you see how big that azigus vein is here, joining the superior vena cava, that's your aorta. 
And you see flow in different directions because it's coming from the back of the body into the superior vena cava and into the right atrium. Uh, and that's the normal aortic arch. So uh, another abnormality has been described more or less recently affecting the innominate vein, and that's the uh, same image as I showed you before. You have the innominate vein running here from left to right, uh, and this is what's called an intrathymic uh, innominate vein. You can see the thymus is in here, this is part of the thymus, so it runs more anteriorly and it has a curvature, sometimes quite prominent. Uh, it doesn't seem to cause any problem. To my knowledge, it hasn't been associated with any chromosomal abnormalities or anything. So it's kind of a, a variation uh, of the norm as well. And you can see the flow runs from left to right into the inferior vena cava. Just the baby's in a different position, but the, the flow direction is the same from left to right into the superior vena cava of no functional consequence. So very briefly, I hope I have uh, uh, shown to you that uh, beyond those very basic short axis view of the inferior vena cava, the superior vena cava, and the pulmonary veins. You can add color, you can do sagittal views, and you can start looking at the other structures. Uh, I believe a lot of you do the ductus zoonosis for your assessment of growth restriction, but you may or may not have incorporated that into the assessment of the fetal heart. So I think if we include superior and inferior vena cava, we should include the umbilical vena system as well uh, if we're doing routine fetal echocardiogram. I've briefly scanned this baby before. It was uh, cooperative. Let's hope it's still like that. So, uh, as always, uh, has changed position. No, more or less the same. So, although we use a cardiac scan, are you projecting there? Yeah. I, uh, first thing I would do is to change the depth a little bit, just to have an idea of the whole fetus, because Otherwise, we don't go straight to the heart. So head is up, baby is in a bridge position. As I'm moving down here, you see the spine is on the right. We can see the four chambers already. And then lower down, we have the baby's uh, abdomen. So then after identifying our laterality, we know the head is up, we know where the spine is. Just trying to see where we can optimize this image. I'm going to Put a zoom box. I think we might have to scan through the baby's back. So it's not the ideal position, but we, we can see that we can still identify all the structures. So let's, let's start from here. Baby's spine up. So this is the baby's, um, my arrow, left side. The stomach is on the left. So we, you can see that the umbilical vein is obfuscated by the spine. We can go a little bit sideways, but if not, let's go through the sagittal views because we have to take the opportunity that we are. The other thing is you have to be able to see very quickly, and I'm just going back because I could see the bicaval vein there. There we are. So sometimes it's just a frame or two, and you should know in your machine where you put your uh, where the freeze button is, so we can do that very quickly. So that's the inferior vena cava, and that's the superior vena cava. It wasn't what I was intending to see straight away, but the baby's in a position that's favorable for that, so that is, you know already that the vena cavas are in the correct position. So let's go back to our abdomen. So let's start from here. So heart is on the left, we can see umbilical vein. It's always good in this case to start with color to see the venous system. And you can see here that the velocity is quite high because we start in a cardiac preset. So I'm going to drop that velocity. And just by dropping the velocity, you can see that we're bringing out all the information. Did nothing else. Now we are on 17, about 20 centimeters per second. And you can see beautiful, the umbilical vein. That's a gold bladder uh, to the right side. So let's change to the other color because we can see aliasing better on the conventional color. So again, I'm going to drop that down to around 20, 25. So we have here the umbilical vein. You can see already the ductus venosus coming here, coming from the umbilical vein. That's the portal vein going to the right side of the lobe, the, the liver. That's a bit of the left portal vein. That's our ductus venosus. If you want to see it more, drop your velocity a bit more. You can see more alias in there, depending on the gestational age. But in mid-gestation, that's the point, so you can Doppler your 
baby's breathing and moving, so you have to be a bit patient. You can see lots of the effect of breathing here, so we're not getting a good signal, so you may have to wait for baby to be a bit quieter. But that's a normal position of the ductus venosus. I'm going to um, yeah, just drop down the baseline here. Um, obviously, I'm doing very quickly. That's your A wave, S wave, D wave. It's a high velocity. It's the highest velocity in the venous system. Is the uh, the venous duct? The highest velocity on the arterial system is the arterial duct. So if you come out the pulse wave, so if I split the image to our twin view, we know where the uh, inferior vena cava is. Over here, that's the left side of the baby, that's inferior vena cava. You see hepatic veins coming there, and you can see the ductus venosus coming from here, and eventually that joins into the inferior vena cava with the hepatic veins. For a bit of luck, we can see that in a sagittal view. That's our umbilical vein. And we can use the kind of new technology showing this three-dimensional aspect. Again, as I said, I like to have a dual image because it gives me the 2D image as well as the color information. And we can see there that ductus venosus following from the umbilical vein and just joining up here into the inferior vena cava. So I started more from the sagittal views because of fetal position, transverse view to allow me to see the umbilical venous return. So I'll try and demonstrate to the doctors uh, the, the coronary sinus. It wasn't the easiest one to see in this baby. <clears throat> so it has a relatively small <clears throat> ductus venosus, but if you look for it, it's here. Same appearance as I showed before. <coughs> this is the right atrium, and that's the coronary sinus. This is called the mouth of the coronary sinus, and it's of normal size, so very posterior. Maybe I will narrow the sector a bit more to improve my resolution. You can see we're not in the baby in the most favorable position, but we can still see the structures if we are targeting the structures we need to see. Lost the ductus venosus from there. Let's move into the superior vena cava. Let's try and find a slightly better position from this baby. We've seen the superior vena cava on the sagittal view. Always narrow the sector to improve the frame rate. Let's see if we can do a sweep from here. Yeah, it's not quite a perfect uh, transverse sweep. It's slightly oblique, but you still have your superior vena cava here, your duct. You're not quite seeing the not a good view of the upper mediastinum. Let's start from the back here, because sometimes even the spine is on the top we can still see the structures more clearly, particularly if we add color. So in unfavorable position, I think it's quite nice to use this kind of new technology that allows a three-dimensional view of the, of the fetal heart. So I'm gonna drop the velocity because this is a good position to see pulmonary veins. And you can see how beautifully they're coming into the left atrium. With the baby moving, you get a lot of artifact Remember, we're scanning through the baby's back because that's the way the baby's presenting to us, so we need to orientate ourselves. So this is the right side, that's the left side, that's the atrial septum, so we're looking for pulmonary veins, which we can see here and there, but obviously it's much easier if we put a color flow, which is sensitive to low flow, babies having hiccups. So in here, for example, we have very clearly that we know here's the atrial septum, baby's spine up, but even then, we have very good image showing the pulmonary vein from the right lung coming to the left atrium. We have here pulmonary vein from the left lung coming into the left atrium. So we've identified two pulmonary veins, uh, much better with the use of color. Let's try and do the, can I take the, the angle off? I put it by mistake. 
So lots of ways we're seeing all four of them, I think. I always like to hear the sound um, because it helps optimizing the signal. But that's what we're looking for in terms of the pulmonary arch and pulmonary venous signal. That's the A wave, uh, S wave, D wave, and that's the ventricular systole. So we, we use usually a slightly higher uh, size of sample volume to capture here at the same time. You can see there, if I magnify, there's a pulmonary vein coming to the left atrium. At the same time, you have a pulmonary artery. So within the lung parenchyma, they run uh, together, so with a relatively uh, large sample volume. And you have lots of points where you can sample, so it's relatively easy 